At the opening of the film, this woman, whose back is only shown, is asking the following questions. Who is she? Where does she come from? What is her story? And who were the women they always talked and whispers when they thought she wasn't listening? Year 1925 in Argentina, a young woman is riding a train. She then hitches a ride, stops by a house, and waits for some time. As an old woman appears from the front door, she becomes emotional. The old woman, on the other hand, drops what she has in her hand upon laying eyes on the young woman. Even though it's only the first time they see each other, they know right away who each other is. Because they are one another's mother and daughter who have been away from each other for a very long time. This is Marcella and this is Anna, the woman who appeared at the opening of the film. After feeding Anna, Marcella begins telling her story as an answer to all the questions her daughter has. It was a rainy morning in Acoruña, Spain in 1898. Marcella was running late for class. As she walked in the school hallway in confusion, Elisa, a third-year student, noticed her. Elisa approached her and asked if she is in the first year. Marcella nodded and stated that she was sick so she had to miss the first few days. Elisa demanded to follow her so that Marcella could dry herself off. Being the niece of the director of the convent school, Elisa assured Marcella that she'd tell them the reason why she had been missing classes. She then helped her in drying her clothes and hair. Seconds later and they were already fooling around. They introduced themselves to one another, then proceeded to Marcella's classroom. Later on, Elisa would be seen observing Marcella who seemed to be waiting for someone. She followed her and surprised her from behind. It turned out that she was the one Marcella was waiting for because she wanted to thank her. After telling Marcella that she lives upstairs with her aunt and the nuns, Elisa walked Marcella home and lastly reminded her not to forget anymore her umbrella. Of all those seconds that they were standing outside the house, Marcella's father was secretly watching them. Tomorrow came and Marcella repeatedly rehearsed her possible greetings to Elisa. It was once again a rainy morning. She surely had her umbrella with her but cunningly left it and joyfully ran in the rain. While walking in the hallway in her soaking clothes, she searched for Elisa. When Elisa appeared, she said she had forgotten her umbrella. Elisa signaled to follow her. And so they were there again, drying Marcella's clothes and hair and giving constant stares to each other. During break time, Elisa invited Marcella to come see her room. There they talked about their personal lives but at some point Marcella got offended. At night while Marcella's family were having dinner, Elisa came knocking on the door. She pretended she borrowed a book from Marcella and she was there to return it. Marcella's father was the one who received the book. He handed it over to Marcella with suspicion. At her room, Marcella browsed the pages and found Elisa's note asking for forgiveness. The next morning, the two made up and walked by the sea. Elisa told Marcella she dreamt of her, and Marcella said she likewise did. They talked more about dreams. Elisa mentioned she dreamt one day that she was riding a horse and crossed the ocean. She reached the other side and it's Argentina. She thought that dream was absurd because she had never been on a horse before, and she was terrified of the ocean. Hearing it, Marcella started taking off her clothes. She pulled Elisa in the water and helped her in overcoming her fear. Soon they were so happy, teasingly splashing the cold water on each other. After their play, Elisa has again walked Marcella home. Marcella bid goodbye and was about to enter the house but Elisa stopped her. Elisa said if she was to die at that very moment, her day with Marcella by the sea would be the happiest of her life. Marcella smiled, kissed her on the cheek, and whispered that someday she would get her the horse. As soon as Marcella stepped inside the house, she was slapped by her father. In the morning, she was told by him to put her book away and not to go to school. When she asked why, he replied that her mother is not feeling well so she needs to stay with her. Her mother denied being sick, but her father still insisted. At school, when Elisa did not see Marcella in her classroom, she came to her house and knocked on the window. 
Marcella had secretly let her in and led her into her room. They stayed there quietly, only looking at each other's faces. Soon, Elisa touched Marcella's mole in the neck, then pointed out hers. She said she has moles all over her body. Marcella asked if maybe one day she could show those to her. Elisa smiled, shook her head, but then nodded. She came closer. And as she was about to kiss Marcella, they heard the door slam. Elisa was pretending to read a book for Marcella when Marcella's father entered the room. After he asked why she is there, he coldly told her to get out. Marcella was just about to leave their house for school the next morning when her parents stopped her and told her that they decided to send her to a boarding school in Madrid. Marcella insisted on going to school and fought with her father but that was of no help. The two wrote and exchanged letters as they were away from each other. Every letter indicated their love and longing for one another. Three years later, as Elisa was teaching her own class, Marcella appeared outside her classroom's door. She hurriedly walked to her and they hugged. She got back to her place bringing along Marcella. And there they finally had their first kiss. They exchanged several kisses, took off each other's clothes, and made love. Marcella has at last seen Elisa's moles. Marcella, as advised by Elisa, applied for a teaching job in the nearby village. Just a few days later, Elisa moved in with her. They filled their days and nights with sexual activities, and they used unusual objects to spice things up. One night when Marcella was preparing an octopus for dinner, Elisa approached her and touched her seductively, leading them to use the octopus in their lovemaking. Day after that, Elisa received a letter saying her cousin Mario, who lived in England, had died from drowning. At night, they attended the village party where a man named Andres insisted on dancing with Marcella. They played along so that the others wouldn't get suspicious of them. Elisa watched the two sadly, hence they sneaked out later to dance together, not knowing that Andres was watching them. When morning came, the people started to gossip about their secret dance. They got back to their place and Elisa approached Marcella with milk this time to use in their sensual act. Later, Andres stopped by to invite Marcella for another dance. Elisa told him Marcella could not make it, then shut the door on him and so he got angry. He shouted insults and kept on knocking and looking for Marcella while a neighbor was witnessing the whole thing. The following day when Marcella entered her class, only two of her students showed up, and Elisa, while gathering food in the forest, got inflicted with wounds and bruises because the people started throwing stones at her. They were harassed too much that they even had to cover themselves every time they needed to go out. But despite those, they still stayed at each other's side. They devised a plan to make the harassments come to an end. As days passed, the gossiping neighbor asked Marcella the whereabouts of Elisa, for she had not seen her for a while. Marcella replied that Elisa had gone away with her relatives. One day, as Andres talked to her, she deliberately mentioned that she had run out of firewood. Andres took the bait. He offered to bring her some that night, and so she waited for him. One morning, a man in his hat and suit entered Marcella's place. It was Elisa, disguised as his deceased male cousin. She went to the church and talked to the priest, introducing herself as Mario. She told him she wanted to marry Marcella, but the problem is she had lost all her documents and she had never been baptized. The priest, without doubting what she said and how she looked, told her that he would baptize her and he would marry them immediately. And so they got married. While riding the automobile, however, the gossiping neighbor noticed instantly that Mario is in fact Elisa. The village was once again filled with gossip about them because of it. As the neighbor brought in a priest and a doctor to confirm Elisa's identity, Marcella confidently explained that Mario and Elisa are cousins. So they just looked so much alike. She told them to wait a few more months if they are still not convinced, because they would surely believe that Mario is a real man then, 
for she is currently conceiving his child, the child that was actually from Andres. People rallied and threw rocks at them, not believing any of Marcella's explanations. Elisa was then called in by the priest who married them. She immediately denied the so-called accusations, thinking that the priest was only going to talk to her, not expecting that it was actually a trap. After she was captured by the authority and was examined by the doctor, she and Marcella became the front page of the newspapers. A marriage without a man. They left for Portugal that night, and luckily the police did not question their papers. Few months later, Marcella's stomach had gotten bigger. She worked as a kitchen helper and Elisa worked in a tailor shop. But one day, police officers came knocking on their door to arrest them. Marcella was sent to a female prison block, while Elisa was sent for questioning at the warden's office. The warden was holding in his hand a warrant from the court of Acorunia. He read it to Elisa. Elisa still denied the accusations and insisted she is Mario, but the warden told her to stop her nonsense. The warden meant no harm to them. In fact, he was only worried of what would happen to her if she was put in the same cell with all the men. All those while, Marcella was welcomed nicely by her cellmates. Elisa asked what they were accused of and so the warden cited everything to her. He said that her friend is wanted as an accomplice and so Elisa swore to him that Marcella is innocent and is soon going to have a child. The warden was stunned. He told Elisa to put on a dress and he assured her that she would be taken to the woman's block where Marcella is. Elisa sighed in relief. She thanked the warden and told him that he is a good man. The two reunited and hugged each other tight. They were photographed and their story appeared in Portugal's newspapers. Soon people started visiting their prison dropping off gifts. The time for Marcella's labor came. She gave birth to a baby girl and they named her Anna. Meanwhile, the warden talked to the governor and told him that if they hand the two over to the Spanish authorities, they would be sentenced to a maximum of 10 years in prison. The governor asked him not to keep it from happening. Back at the cell, Anna was crying nonstop, so Elisa asked Marcella to let her calm the baby down. Marcella pulled the baby away from her. As it turned out, Anna was burning up, but Marcella was just acting ignorant about it. It seemed that she was trying to get rid of her child. Elisa hurriedly called the doctor. The doctor diagnosed Anna of pneumonia. He then told Flora, the nurse, that the baby will die if they do not get her fever down quickly. Flora therefore offered to bring them to her house. She put them in a bathtub of cold water then took good care of them. Flora was then revealed as the wife of the warden. Elisa could not express how grateful she is to the couple. She asked them if they have children. Flora answered no. Since the warden could not hold the two of them in the prison any longer and they would be deported once released, the warden suggested a plan for them to get away. As they were packing their belongings, getting ready to leave, Elisa looked for Anna. Marcella said Anna is with Flora because she asked her to watch her child until they got ready. Elisa showed her excitement saying they'll never have to set foot in that cell again, to which Marcella replied that it was not so bad in there. She said it was worse outside where they were circus freaks and where there was no escape for them. Elisa in dismay responded that that was why she was Mario and why they were married. And why I had my daughter, Marcella interrupted. Elisa coaxed her and said that she'll understand if she will choose to stay there with her daughter. Marcella got angry for Elisa couldn't grasp that she is leaving Anna behind. And she really left her child to the good couple. She did not say a word before leaving, so Flora asked Elisa to tell her that they would make sure the child knows who her mother is. They bid farewell. Marcella heard Anna's cries, and she later on expressed her sorrow with her own loud cry. Back in the present time where Anna tells Marcella she hated her, and Marcella understanding her feeling, Elisa comes riding a horse from afar. Anna asks if all the things they've gone through was worth it. Marcella only gives her a smile as an answer, then walks towards Elisa. This, by the way, is a biographical film. 
everything in here truly happened in real life. The ending states that Elisa and Marcella's marriage was never annulled. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the summary, you will surely enjoy watching the full film.